So the next thing we're going to take a look at is the way to structure the information that you have inside of your uh, Gitbook editor and your Gitbook instance. So as you see here, again, this is our Gitbook editor. If you're working on internal content, you're pretty much just only going to be working inside of here. On the left, uh, just a quick lay of land again, we have the home. This is going to give you some options to and some getting started kind of materials if you have created this. You can also dismiss this and it will give you a, uh, a list of recent spaces to see what's been edited by your team. It, it just says me in here because uh, no one else has, has been working in here. Uh, I have some information that we change out, so keep an eye on this, but we also have integrations. The doc sites are going to get, be a list of published things. We're not gonna spend a whole lot of time here. Um, and we also have integrations that we can add, which we are gonna come back to this. But underneath here, we have the doc sites header which is very, I mean, it's just basically the same thing as the doc sites uh, section here, but it will give a list of it. And the reason this is kind of cool um, is because when you have it in a list like this, you can see all of the spaces that are connected to this. Um, you'll also, when you click into the doc site specifically, get a lot of information on this published site specifically. We covered all of this last webinar so head to our youtube if you want to cover this a little bit more in depth because what we're actually really interested in is the way that the spaces underneath here work so again development design finance and marketing and then the uh public docs which we're not going to spend so much time in but what i want to talk about is how we can organize pages within a space and then we'll also talk about collections and then the permissions how that works uh here so the way that I always recommend teams to get started when they're organizing uh, their content is to start by creating a collection for the things that they want to make. You can always create a collection from these this header up here. You can create a new space, but you can also create a new collection from here. You can import content too, but let's go ahead and create a new collection. Uh, we're gonna call this uh, development or actually engineering, probably a little bit more fitting. Uh, we'll move that above the public docs one. And what I'm gonna do right away is move the development one inside of here. What I'm also gonna do is add the other ones here. Uh, so let's do this. Design. And another collection. And the reason that I'm using collections in this way uh, is because all of these spaces that you have inside of a collection <clears throat> are going to inherit the permissions that you have set at the top level. So for instance, we have this one called engineering. We have a development uh, section in here. I'm gonna create a new space, which you can do from the three dots here. Let's do something like, um, we'll just do contributing. <clears throat> and because let's say the engineering uh, workflow uh, might have some, actually just, I'll give a better example. We'll do something like, because this engineering, um, because this engineering collection has some maybe more private information that we don't need everyone to uh, have, what we can do is take a look at this and um, add different teams here. So we actually want to uh, give this to just administrators. And we also want to invite the engineering team which we we just created before oh actually this is the match the role set inside of here and engineering can be an administrator in here so this model is excuse me the uh, access for the company kind of wide one we can also do this <clears throat> for all of the different 
uh, ones as well. So I, I won't go through all of these just yet or exactly how I did, but as you can kind of see, we can give this to kind of everyone here. What I also might wanna do with this one, for instance, when I go to the share, um, we can also g give the leadership team probably access to this. And the leadership team might wanna be just like a reader. Um, and I also that's forgot what to do. I, I forgot to give this no access here. So basically, what this is saying is everyone in the uh, organization by default won't have access. All of the engineering team will be administrators in here and all of the leadership team will be readers and you'll match your highest um, permission that's set. So because I'm in, uh, set as a reader here technically in the leadership team, I'll actually be an administrator in here as well. Um, so we see that. Um, you can also see in here who has access as well. So because we, uh, because this space is inside of the engineering collection, when you head to the share modal inside of a space that's inside of a collection, you'll be able to again see uh, who has access to just like the engineering um, uh, collection and then yourself as well. And if you click into that, you'll also get a, a detailed view of like admins and the readers. And again, those are set from the collection level. Hopefully that's clear. Um, and that's a pretty good way on how I would recommend to structure your own team as well. Uh, and the way that you set up your permissions um, from there. Company-wide, um, again, because this is everyone in our organization, we're just going to allow them to inherit it so they can, uh, they can, they will have access. Now, another thing that I want to share with you and show you how you can invite people uh, specifically to um, something. What Let's say that the marketing team has been working with uh, some partners and they're working on some uh, extra like blog posts or something. We can create a new space for that. And I'll just show you from scratch in here. So we'll say partner blog post number one. And we'll just keep that as untitled, it's fine. Um, when you share something specifically, you'll be able to see this here. So everyone in our marketing team um, will have access. We can choose if we don't want them to have access, et cetera. But I could add someone else and do uh, gitbook.com. Uh, but actually, we can do something like Addison Partner 1. We'll just change this to keep that. Um, and we can add them as a, uh, as a partner to this as an editor. And this, and let me go back now to the organization settings to show you how that affects your members. Um, you'll see that they should actually only have access to the one, but that's because they were activated. I think it's because actually they by default, we don't have them set in. So what we actually wanna do is, in this case, actually, what you'd probably wanna do is go and make sure that by default, no one has access except admins or maybe like your company. And then when you go to here, I'll just do this so we can see it again in, in real time. And the public talks too. So this will just, again, focusing on this one user, they only <clears throat> have access to this one blog post. These are some things that I was working on before that were deleted. 
they're in the trash here. They will be deleted uh, after seven days. Just keep that in mind. But you can see how the member, the partner, uh, only has access to the one space that we want, and they are an editor in that space specifically. You can always head back as well again to the members list and definitely get like a good overview of who has access to what. You can click into it and see um, see you see the permissions that have been set across uh, across the app there.